Hello my friends, welcome to the Gear Addiction channel. Today, another day, we need more gear. And for gear, we definitely need Andy the gear guy. New gear? Okay. That's not gear. Ooh. It's a manual for gear. Yamaha DX7 2. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Like if you if you don't know, the Yamaha DX7 is one of the or is the most legendary FM synthesizer on the planet. Wow. But why just a manual? Oh, there's the real deal. Ooh, perfect. Thank you, Andy. I hope to see you tomorrow again with more gear, maybe? Okay, there, there's always new gear. Oh my God, a real GX7? Let's see. Can't you see that we're lost in, we're lost in the ashes? This one right here, the DX7 Yamaha is the most legendary synth ever. It's the first to introduce to a broader market FM synthesis, which was brand new back then. I think there was like just one or two synthesizers beforehand that did the same. This was the first unit that was available to everyone and was cheaper and they sold over 200,000 of these. For example, other synth manufacturers at the same time sold maybe 10,000 units. So this was a huge hit and it shaped definitely 100% the 80s sound by a lot. And it was something entirely new. Back then, everyone was used to normal analog subtractive synthesizers. This one right here was FM based, which is insanely complicated and amazing at the same time. Because right here, you look at it and it looks not like much because you have some presets here. You see right here, you got A. A shows you the presets, so we can select one, two, three, and all of these are different sounds. Two, one of my favorites, especially the, the lower tones. It's so good. And then, yeah, you go through the presets, you can then select um, 33 to 64, which switches these presets up. And then you can actually extend it from 32 presets to 64. So it's like A, B, you can switch it right here. And the version 2 has like a B dual mode. You select it here, dual, and then you can select for A or B, another preset and stack them. So we can stack now 7 and two and i'd say 99 percent of people that bought it that's what they were using the preset and that was it and and something that was new to it were these more bell airy harsh kind of sounds let's put it back in single mode and i'm really lucky again everything is working right here this thing was um i think 280 290 Those are like the bell, harsher, harp kind of sounds. That's the basic stuff. Again, there's like a second layer to all of this and that is this, like the actual FM synthesis. And it's, it's kind of complicated because you're probably not used to it. I'll try to explain it a little, but it's like, and it all has to do with these algorithms. Here is group one. Second group is really wide. Then again here at the bracket underneath. So we have four groups. Then each algorithm, for example, algorithm one, you can see the connections between one, two, three, four, five, six, and they're rearranged between these algorithms. And one to six, those are actually, they're called operators. You could think of them as an oscillator, but they're actually not. They, they spit out sine waves. So you got six sine waves that are arranged in a different way with modulation in between. That's why frequency modulation. And there is a whole lot you can modulate, like the combination of these. You can turn them on and off in here. It's all in here. There is like a deep menu you have to figure out. And also there is no real attack, sustain, decay, release. There are like different 
points you can alter. You see, you can change L4, R1, L1, R2, L2, R3, L3, R4, L4. That's weird. And this one right here gives you like the depth level, curve level, scaling stuff. Complicated stuff, very complicated stuff. I think it even beats any kind of modular synth because a modular synth, you know, like the, 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 the LFO controls or can control the pitch, for example, and then you route it. So that's, at least for me, easier to understand and clearer because it's less abstract. FM synthesis is a little more complicated, but you can get an array of sounds that isn't possible otherwise. And that's why I wanted to have it. It was a steel, condition is good. Functionally, 100% there, everything works. Some of the buttons you have to press twice to activate them, but that's fine. I mean, you have to consider this thing right here is older than me. It's the oldest thing right here in the studio. It's still working, it's still sounding amazing, and there's still nothing that compares to this. And one little fun fact, I forgot the name of the guy that, that um, came up with this M FM synthesizer stuff. He um, was, I think he was studying back then at Stanford. Yamaha licensed everything. And Stanford, it was their biggest income source for, I think, six to 10 years. Just the licensing to Yamaha for this FM synthesis, which is kind of amazing if you think about it, how much, how much money this one person made with coming up, shaping a brand new world of sounds that defined the 80s a lot. And it's still very usable today. So again, as I already said with the Korg M1, it's something legendary for a price where I just had to get it, play around with it. It's it's my little hobby. I sit here and make music for like 90% of the day and 10% of the day I, I play around with my toys and think about getting new ones. But I actually outsource that to Andy, the gear guy. He takes care of it. Maybe tomorrow something new. I don't really know. Let me know which synth is your favorite, which one I should get next. And I was thinking about, since my studio is getting closer and closer to completion, it's just that gap right there that needs to be closed. I, I was thinking about getting some more gear <laughs> and I need some inspiration. So let's maybe do another episode where you guys send me pictures of your studio. This time we'll do it on Instagram. Just go to your Instagram, take a picture of your studio or if you already have one, just tag me in there. So it will show up on my Instagram in the tagged column. And in a day or two or three, I will go through all of them and present them right here on the channel. So everyone can see everyone else's studio. I get some inspiration, you get some inspiration. Definitely a fun kind of thing to do every once in a while. Thanks for watching.